91.3 WVKR, Brian Mitchell's Songs from the Lower East Side. He's coming out with a new album. It's coming out soon, so we'll have him back on when that new album is out. We heard the track called Walkin', and Brian and his band will be playing this Sunday as part of the Woodstock Music and Art Festival at the Bearsville Center in Woodstock. It's a full-day event happening from 12 to 6 p.m. this Sunday, featuring Brian Mitchell, Abby Hollander Bluegrass Band, and Bennett Harris Blues. It's a community event. Children are welcome and encouraged to come. There's a whole bunch of great activities, nature trails, rock and roll tours, some food, art, and all kinds of great things happening at the Woodstock Music and Art Festival at Bearsville Center in Woodstock, New York. And now let us get on the phone today's guest. It's about time that we bring him on air. Let's get him in here. Mark, are you with me? Hi, how's it going? I am with you. Okay, that's always a great way to start a conversation and uh, when I don't hang up on on my guest. So thanks so much for being here. You know, I had Myra Blaustein on the um, show last week and man, this is such an exciting festival. Um, 25 years uh, they're celebrating, the Woodstock Film Festival is celebrating its 25th anniversary and I'm thrilled to talk to you. You are a director, you're a filmmaker and you are premiering this film called Turning. So Marco, I want to learn more about you before we talk about the film. So tell me where you're from. I am from a uh, town in northern New Jersey called Tenafly, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I started sort of working in film at a young age. What's a young age? I went to uh, high school jobs. So uh, I would say 17, 18 is when I first started uh, getting into PAing in the industry, yeah. Yeah. And what, like, what made you, just like, what, was a film buff, you loved watching films, what what got you interested in film? Um, my family was involved in film, and so I was shown a lot of good films at a young age. I remember watching uh, a lot of Westerns growing up, The Wild Bunch um, was something that sticks out. And yeah, I was thankfully, my mom and dad exposed me to a, a lot of really good films at a young age, some of which I revisited later on and was able to get a, a better appreciation for. But yeah, there were certain movies that I remember seeing at a very young age that uh, that stuck out and made me want to try it myself. Love that. Love that. Um, I, I read a little bit that uh, you've been writing screenplays for a, quite a bit and that a book prompted you to download the final draft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, When I was a senior in high school, I read a book by Beverly Swirling called City of Dreams, which is uh, historical fiction. Um, and I really wanted to try to see what it looked like in script form. So I I illegally downloaded Final Draft at the time, and uh, since I have a legal version, so uh, thank you to Final Draft for tolerating my illegal download at the time. But uh, yeah, it, it made me look up a lot of scripts and seeing what they look like and how to read them and how to write them. And I still love that book. I still want to see it made into a movie at some point. But, well, why don't uh, you do bigger, that? A bigger thing. You could do that. Sure. Is any anyone of a few hundred million? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you never know, you know. You don't know, right, who you meet and who, you know. You're going to be at this festival and there's all, every, you know, everybody's there, you know. So you never know who you meet and um, it could be an aspiration for you. Did you study film in college? Yeah, so I, I eventually ended up doing that. I started at uh, Skidmore College up in Saratoga. Saratoga. Nice. Uh, but they didn't have a film program there as much as I loved it up there. Uh, and then I transferred to Wesleyan University yeah. in order to study film and also play baseball there. Um, yeah. Nice, nice. So you're the creative type and the sports kind of guy. I love that. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it worked out for me at least at the time. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. See. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, how, okay, so you started writing, and there's so many aspects to film, right? There's so much involved. When you look at those credits, you only see a few actors on the screen and what we see on the screen. But behind the scenes, it's it's sometimes hundreds of people, depending on, you know, the size of the film. What was, like, your first go-to? What was, like, the first thing you said, hey, listen, I'm going to try this, 
as far as being part of a film? What was the first position? Sure. Yeah, I was really lucky again to be on big professional union productions when I was when I was growing up at 17, 18 years old, whether that was as a PA in the office or on set. So I saw what that world looked like um, and I was able to be close enough to it to know it was, a, it was what I wanted to do. And then uh, when I was working on a movie called The Irishman, I was working in the location department of that scouting locations and, and helping to, uh, to deal with the logistics of filming at every different location in New York that we shot at. I met uh, a few people my age who wanted to do similar things. And I had a short film that was about three or four pages that all took place on a roof. And I asked one of my friends if she wanted to produce it um and i asked another friend if they knew anyone who had a camera and that ended up being uh how i started making my own stuff that was a crew of four people on a roof for that, is that the 12, one, 12 hours one night was that called on the ledge <laughs> that was you really did your research yes. that was called on the ledge yeah <laughs> yeah yeah what's become of it marco um, it played at a few festivals. It's still something that I I love because it was the first thing that I did. But funnily enough, the uh, the cinematographer of that, whose name is Nico Alvo, he was a producer on Turning, um, oh. and he'll be there for the Q and A on Sunday. Uh, we worked together. We became very close friends. He's awesome. Yeah. So exciting. So exciting. So you really were a part of some huge Hollywood productions: Joker, West Side Story. Yeah, it was a real privilege to be on those sets and uh, even being removed from the creative side of it, you're still there every day uh, watching it happen. Yeah. And then there were some bigger ones that I actually was allowed to be a little bit closer to the creative process because I was the director's assistant um, on the movie Hustlers for Loreen Scafaria. Wow. And then on... Uh, the movie, the TV show, Dead Ringers. I was the director's assistant for Sean Durkin. Wow. And both of them really ended up being big mentors and sort of took me under their wings. And I still stay in touch with them. And I asked them a lot of questions before we shot this movie. Yeah, they're, they're really, really amazing people. Yeah. And I mean, that's got to be the best education of all, right? Is just being on set and just watching it and sitting back or, or working it and just like, you know, watching the masters do their thing. But pretty, pretty impressive movies that you were part of. I was very, very lucky to be put in the position that uh, I was able to, to be on set and, and be able to observe and also that they were kind enough to say, hey, listen and watch and sit in on casting calls and, and watch the process as opposed to uh, I've heard a lot of stories from other people that have been assistants to a lot more high maintenance people where you're never really involved in those in those uh, learning situations. Uh, okay. So, yes, I was very lucky and I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have your own production company? I do. Yeah, I started uh, during the pandemic a production company called Hero Boy Productions, and uh, we are in New York. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, a mix between production services where we rent out a lot of stuff to uh, bigger union world jobs like the, the jobs that, that I worked on. I started it with my partners, uh, Gregory Giacomo and Wilson Rivas. Um, and then we also have produced three three feature films this Man. uh paradise and lunch which was shot up in woodstock at sunflower market actually last last summer and we'll be going to festivals next summer um and yeah it's been it's been uh a really really fun experience with hero boy as well yeah that's very exciting yeah you've got some great things happening that's for sure um and your film turning is it may is this the world premiere or New York premiere or what kind of what what are we doing here with next week at the at the Woodstock Film Festival with your film turning? Woodstock will be the world premiere. Wow! I'm very happy. Yeah, Woo. I got. <laughs> it's very exciting. A lot of the casting crew are coming up also because we shot in the Hudson Valley. A lot of the casting crew are local to begin with, so they'll they'll be there. Wow. How exciting. So I know that you're doing two 
screenings of this at the Woodstock Film Festival. I know the movie will be at Rosendale Theater on Friday, October 18th at 7.45 p.m. Is there a Q&A after the Rosendale show? Showing? There will be a Q&A. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, it will be with myself. The lead actor in the movie, Will Hawkman, will be there. Um, another one of the leading, two of the other leading actors, excuse me, uh, Marianne Rendon and Chris McCann will be there. Uh, one of the producers and my father, Richard Barada, will be there. And the cinematographer, Eric Richardson, will be there as oh, well for the Q&A. Exciting. And you also have a showing of your film turning on Sunday, October 20th at the Tinker Street Cinema, which is in Woodstock. And that's at 7.30 p.m. That's the closing night of the Woodstock Film Festival. So this film turning, I, I'm going to be at the Rosendale show, so I really look forward to meeting you. And Tell us about this film. So you wrote it and directed it and producing it or no? Yes. Yep. Talk about the concept. uh, Yeah. Talk about the concept. The the concept was um, I, as I mentioned, I'm a former college athlete. And the story is also about a former college basketball star who is living in a barn upstate uh, of a property that belongs to his best friend and uh, college teammates' family, and he manages the property and rents the property out while uh, the family is in the city with the mother who's getting cancer treatment. Mm. So that is the one-line premise. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But we were able to film. Actually, this is where it sort of mixes with real life and where the inspiration came from. We were able to film um, in the town of Stanfordville at my actual college teammate and very close friend's family's property. Oh, wow. Um, and it's inspired by the fact that uh, when we were in our last year of college, his mother actually was going through uh, her cancer treatments, and she has since unfortunately passed away. Oh. But mm-hmm. that was a lot of the inspiration behind one of the characters. Um, and they were gracious enough that family the jones family was gracious enough to let us film at the property and uh use that as inspiration it's not a one-to-one but yeah Mm -hmm. the character is up there and uh it's really just about finding out uh what what your passion is once the thing that you cared about the most is gone so and the title property different the title yes turning turning yeah it, it used to be something different. It was changed to Turning. The main character's name is Julian Turner. And uh, I figured it, it seemed nice and poetic to call it Turning because it is about turning a page in your life as well and uh, and growing up. I'm so excited for you. What a, what a great place to premiere. Have you been to the Woodstock Film Festival before? I have not, oh. but I've spent a lot of time in the area and I am... Very excited. Yeah, it, it's a really incredible festival. I, I do, I don't know, 15 films. I'm a nut. I, I just go from one to the other to the other. And it's just, you know, this is what filmmaking is and, and the movies. And nowadays, you know, I talked to my era with, you know, the big Hollywood blockbusters with the AI and all of that stuff. You know, the film is changing. You know that. And um, it's just nice to, to go to a festival and see some of the stuff that they have showing here. One of my favorite things about going to a festival, or the film festival, is um, the Q&A. That's exciting. Like, we're going to meet you. We're going to, audience can ask you questions afterwards. And it, it gets to be real, you know. And um, it, it's one of my favorite parts about going to a film festival. So, um, yeah, definitely look forward to the Q&A. Again, your film is called Turning, and you are going to be pre- world premiere here on Friday, next Friday, the 18th, at the Rosendale Theater in Rosendale, New York. And then you'll also have a second showing at the festival on Sunday, October 20th, at the Tinker Street Cinema, right in downtown Woodstock, New York. And Marco Barada, wow, good stuff. Now, how long did it take to film this, to make this film? We filmed it in 20 days. 20 uh, days. Up there. Yep. Wow. 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 And it's 95 minutes. So it's a full length. And, um, and what do you, I know what it is, but tell us like you show it at a film festival. What is it that you try to do with these films, with your film? 
Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, goal number one is to get as many eyes on it as possible. Um, and in order to do that, the goal is to sell it and get it out into the world. Um, so, yeah, we, we just want to build some buzz around it. We're very thankful for, for to Woodstock and to the film festival and to Mira for allowing it to, to have its world premiere there. And we'll see what happens from there. But the goal is to get it to a distributor or work with the distributor, get it out in theaters and get it out in the world so that people can see it. And it hopefully can, uh, can have an effect on, on how they, uh, how they feel about life for a few hours at, at least. Yeah. And that's the great thing about film. I love film as much as I love music. That's why I always de- dedicate two shows to the Woodstock film festival and it's incredible filmmakers. And we're so lucky to have that right here in the Hudson Valley, you know, and, um, You've got a wonderful cast um, on this. You've got, uh, I'm just looking at music. Talk to me about music on here. I see that there's composers. What did you do for music? Yeah, The music is one of the most fun parts of the whole process to me. We worked with wonderful composers, uh, Paul Corley and Sindri Mar Sigfusen, um, and they were able to, to write some beautiful score um, for certain moments in the film. And then we have a few needle drops too, which is always super fun. Uh, One of my favorite folk artists, Jackson C. Frank, we licensed, I believe, four or five of his songs to put in in the film, which uh, I think really sets the tone. And then Paul and and Sindri were able to, to match that, but also take it to a bit of a different place uh, with with their score and it's it's really really lovely. I can't I can't wait for for that, especially especially Jackson C. Frank song. He's just one of my favorite mm-hmm. folk artists. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it really does make a difference. The movies and the music together. I think anyway. I think it's a huge impact when you get it right and you get both right together. It's magical, you know, and it's just a beautiful flow. So yeah, talk about the actors. Who and how did you find them? Um, I was connected uh, to a casting director named Susan Shopmaker, who has actually cast all of Sean Durkin's movies, uh, The Iron Claw most recently, Martha Marcy May Marlene, or some of his movies. And Susan Shopmaker and Randy Glass are two of the absolute best casting directors out there. Um, And I was very lucky to be connected with them. And yeah, we, we sort of just sent out a casting call uh, the lead was tough because he had to be able to be in a very good basketball player. That was important to me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was connected with Will Hawkman and we're about the same age. We had a, a similar uh, sort of experience through high school and college in the, in the metropolitan area. And we were able to really connect and figure out the character together. And he's really fantastic. Um, Helen Goldsby as well. Uh, Ian Duff, uh, Gabby Beans, who's a Tony-nominated actor who's now starring in uh, in Romeo and Juliet on Broadway, which everyone should go see. She's fantastic. Oh, uh, wow. Exciting. Samuel H. Levine. Yeah, it's a, re- it's a really exciting cast. And what was so fun about it was that it is a lot of a lot of men and women who are my, my age. And we had a May really I ask your age or is that. that rude to ask? No, not at all. I, I I just turned 30 a few months ago. I nice. was 27, 28 when this was originally shot. Oh. Um, and when did you write it? I wrote it about six months prior, so same same age, yeah, 27. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. And now, um, But the cast is, is really great, yeah. Yeah, and now it's coming out. Well, I'm excited to see it. It's on a, it's on my list. And, um, A, you know, I knew you were going to be on the show, so I'm like, well, I really kind of need to go see this film. So um, looking forward to it. And Marco Borata, your film is called Turning, and it's uh, going to be at the Rosendale Theater next Friday, October 18th at 7.45 p.m. Tickets available at woodstockfilmfestival.org. And folks, tickets really do sell out. So some, sometimes they don't, but sometimes they do. And if they do, uh, there's a waiting line outside. So it's always recommended just to get tickets ahead of time. And the film Turning is also going to be on Sunday, October 20th at the Tinker Street Cinema in Woodstock at 7.30 
7.30 p.m. And Marco, I don't know if you know this, but Jimi Hendrix played at that place, the Tinker Street Cinema. There's some, some real history there. I looked it up and I, I was geeking out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So your film is going to be showing there. It's it's pretty cool stuff. So, yeah. Anything else you want to, without saying too much more uh, about the film that you want us as audience members to look for or besides just obviously coming to the theater and seeing it, any other um, things you want to get out about this film turning? I love going into a film blind, but I, I, I'll just add that there's some drama, there's some, some dark comedy, there's some coming of age, there's some magical realism. Hopefully there's a little bit for everyone. Um, I'm just very grateful that uh, it's getting an opportunity to get some eyes on it, and I'm very excited to be there and, and get immersed in the, in the film community of Woodstock. It's yeah. um, super exciting. Yes, yes, absolutely. And remember to vote, folks. They do little ballots at the end, and you can remember to vote. And they do the Maverick Awards on Saturday night, so it's all exciting stuff. But um, I really thank you for your time here, and I'm really excited to see your film turning. Thank you for sharing your time here with us today and and for making film because it's it's such a beautiful art form, and it's something that will always be there. And it's, it's, it's just a wonderful form of art. I, I am such an admirer of good films. So thank you, Marco, and for your time here. And I look forward to meeting you in person next Friday the 18th in Rosendale, New York. Rita, thank you so much for having me. And if I may say one last thing, go Mets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm excited to meet you as well. Oh, that's wonderful. My, one of my best friends is an avid Mets fan, and he's saying the same thing. So, yeah, good stuff. Let's go Mets. All right. You enjoy your evening doing just that, and um, I'll see you next week. Sounds good. Too. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. WVKR, Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York, director, filmmaker, uh, producer, screenwriter, Marco Barada is was our guest just there. His film is called Turning. It's making the world premiere at the Woodstock Film Festival, which runs next week, October 15th through 20th. His film, Turning, is going to be at the Rosendale Theater in Rosendale next Friday, October 18th at 7.45 p.m. And also will be a second showing at the Tinker Street Cinema on Sunday, October 20th at 7.30 p.m. So, folks, check it out, man. It's going to be an incredible week. I start Tesday and go through Sunday. Uh, WoodstockFilmFestival.org, October 15th through 20 and uh, it is one of my favorite weekends of the year it truly truly is that and the saratoga jazz festival those two weekends are just for me uh, in the arts are two of my favorite things so i hope at least maybe you're not as fanatic as me with film where you go see like 12 or 15 of them um in, in a very short span of time but maybe just catch one or two and again folks these are all unreleased films you're not going to know them OK, it, that's the idea of a film festival. These are unreleased um, and they get studios and, you know, people to come and see this and maybe buy the film and put it out there for the whole world to see. So the beauty of a film festival is that you're typically watching films that have not yet been released and that after the films and many of the films that are being shown as part of the Woodstock Film Festival, the filmmakers are there or the actors are there and they do Q&A after the film. It's really an extraordinary event. If you've never been to a film festival, I can't recommend it enough. It is so much fun. It's so much better than just go into a movie, you get to see something that many eyes have not seen before, and you get to maybe ask some questions to the filmmaker. So I hope to see you out there on uh, for the Woodstock Film Festival. I'll certainly be in attendance um, for many of the shows. And anyway, so we're going to keep going here. It is uh, 5.30, so we're going to play two more tracks. Then we're going to do musical happenings. And let's start off this set with Ms. Sarah Milanovic and Daisy Cutter right here right now on 91.3 WVKR. Getting warm 
taught the telephone wires to sing the lonely songs and I still hold my breath around every corner cause tomorrow spring might still be lost stuck in a ditch next to a dirty plywood cross with the beer can best laid plans and barbed wire skeletons of dreams in the northeast the stop signs crease from where the snow plow hit and the city glitters like a shot glass in the sun at night the stars are sharp as diamonds When November plants cold boots upon your shoulders, it doesn't scare you. together this is for the heartache and the big mistakes you made this is for the turnaround from all the games you played this is for the loners the misfits the rebels walking through the storms be 
for the loners, the misfits, and the rebels. Walk into a different drum, you've got wings, don't need feathers. This is for the leap of faith, in a world unknown. Time has come to spread your wings. WVKR, Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York. Carolyn Morosi. We just heard Carolyn with um, Loners, Misfits, and Rebels. That's from her EP that came out, I think, about two years ago. Carolyn is a Hudson Valley wonderful musician. She plays all over the place here, and she's going to be doing just that this Friday night at the Park Theater in Hudson, New York, carolynmorosi.com. Check her out. She's a um, really great performer and really nice person, and um, yeah, she's playing all kinds of great music, that's for sure. Carolyn Morosi, Loners, Misfits, and Rebels. And better yet, go see her live in Hudson at the Park Theater this Friday, October 11th. We also heard Sarah Milanovic, uh, the title track from her album called Northeast. She will be at the Falcon on the 19th, and she will be at Cafe Lena in Saratoga on the 20th. And on the 26th, she'll be in Norwood, Massachusetts. Sarah Milanovic, um, also another incredible resident here that we have in the Hudson Valley. And uh, speaking of Cafe Lena, next week, the guest here on Local Motion will be the executive director of Cafe Lena. It's a legendary place. I know it's a little bit out of the Hudson Valley, but Saratoga is beautiful and Cafe Lena has such history that I just really wanted to learn more and expose the Hudson Valley to more of Cafe Lena. So that's what we'll be um well that's what we'll be talking to next week. So let's keep the musical happenings. Let's get that started here. It's about 541 and we are, we do this towards the end of every show where we list in alphabetical order some of our area venues and who's playing in the hopes that you go support live music, support our world-class venues that we're lucky enough to have right here in our backyard in the Hudson Valley. Let's start out with the Bardavon and UPAC, bardavon.org. October 26th, Jessica Kearson. November 9, Ben Folds. November 11, Sammy Ray and the Friends. Bearsville Theater in Woodstock, also bearsvilletheater.com. Tonight, October 9th, The Devil Makes Three. November 13th, The Bearsville Center Music and Art Fair. October 21, I'm sorry, October 13th is the Bearsville Center Music and Art Fair. That's this Sunday. October 21st, Drive By Truckers at Bearsville Theater. Uncle Chief and Brewster, tickets and info, unclechief.com. Thursday, the Four Horsemen Songwriters. Friday, Ron Blake. Saturday, Chris Berkson with Ellis Hooks. 
and Sunday Brazilian Jazz Brunch with Chiara Izzy. City Winery Hudson Valley in Montgomery and info at citywinery.com. Tonight, Callie McKenzie. November 8th, Crossfire Hurricane, Rolling Stones Tribute. Colony in Woodstock and colonywoodstock.com. I believe the beer garden is still open. You can visit the website for music happening out there. Tonight, Ray Simone in the ballroom at Colony. Thursday, Yingwe Mal- Malmstein. Saturday, Danielle Nicole. Sunday, Ben Soli. And every Monday is an open mic at Colony Woodstock. The Falcon in Marlboro and live at thefalcon.com. Thursday, a double bill. Kim Anderson and Molly Tiger. Friday, Madison McFerrin. Saturday, El Dorado Slim featuring Scott Sherrard of Little Feet. Sunday, the Klesmatics. Fisher Center at Bard College. Info at fishercenter.bard.edu. October 18th, the China Now Music Festival. Howland Chamber Music Circle at Howland Cultural Center in Beacon, November 3, So Percussion. Jazz Forum in Tarrytown and at jazzforumarts.org. October 12th, Alexis Cole Trio. October 13th, Sunday, two shows, Brian Bromberg Trio. The Local in Saugerties and the local Saugerties.com. Friday, John Street Jam. October 18th, Afrofuturist Pop Lalis. October 20, Transylvanian Dance Pianist with Lucien Ban and Matt Maneri, Violist. The Stissing Center in Pine Plains and StissingCenter.org. October 11, Mathis Picard. Tarrytown Music Hall in Tarrytown, also at tarrytownmusichall.org. October 10 through 13th, the Sleepy Hollow Film Festival. October 16th, Richard Thompson. Town Crier in Beacon and towncrier.com. Every Thursday is an open mic. Friday on the salon stage, Bill Kelly. On the main stage, Minstrels in the Gallery, tribute to Jethro Tull. Saturday on the Salon stage, Ray Simone and Robert Hill. On the main stage, Stefan Remble Band. Sunday brunch, oops, I don't have anyone listed for that. Sunday evening, though, Jacob Burns and Chris Knobel. The O Positive Festival in Kingston, Art, Music, and Wellness, October 11th through 13th, featuring Nico Case, Kate Pearson, Rhett Miller, and much more. Last but certainly not least, the 25th Annual Woodstock Film Festival, October 15th through 20. Info at woodstockfilmfestival.org. And that's what I got for happenings. Hope you get out there and enjoy some music. And uh, congratulations again to Alan, who won tickets to the local in Socrates next, um, next Friday night. So, yeah, good stuff happening out there. So I'm going to play one more track, and I think I'm going to bow out early tonight. Um, But let's play one more track here by Stefan Remble. He's going to be at the town crier. This is the album called Triptych, Life in Three Stages, Part 3. Let's take a listen right here, right now on 91.3 WVKR.
Thank mm-hmm. you.